Uh, Katie, what's driving the sell-off in crypto assets? And we just heard Mike Novogratz there saying that 42,000 seems like a support level for Bitcoin. Where do you see things settling? Well, I follow the markets from a technical perspective, and it does seem in part to be driven by exactly that technical analysis. There's a lot of people watching important levels for Bitcoin, for Ether, and even uh, smaller altcoins. So when you do see breakdowns by these cryptocurrencies, they tend to see downside follow through. And indeed, that's what happened with Bitcoin. There was very widely followed support right around 53,000 that was taken out somewhat decisively. And now it's down testing its 200 day moving average. The support levels that we're watching from here are around 44,000. We actually think that level is in jeopardy of breaking, however, and that's based on the indicators that we follow. That includes momentum gauges, overbought, oversold measures, and that would then target secondary and more important support, roughly 37,000. It's that 37,000 level of test that's key in terms of preserving the long term uptrend behind Bitcoin, which we make the assumption that is, is still very much intact despite this short term corrective price action. Yeah, Bitcoin believers often describe the cryptocurrency as a hedge against inflation. But in the past month, we've seen the Fed drop the word transitory and Bitcoin's also off about 20 percent. So can this idea of Bitcoin being an inflationary hedge now be put to rest? Well, I don't think it can be put to rest indefinitely, but certainly for now, it doesn't seem to be acting as such. And we could say the same about gold prices as well. The corrective phase does have downside momentum still, and I want to respect that and also respect the fact that there is just inherent volatility to the cryptocurrency space. So as soon as we see any kind of short term breakdowns, we want to make sure to react to them. The loss of momentum is significant enough that it's equivalent to what we saw back in May. And that's another thing that dictates some risk management there. So we're, we're seeing really risk assets more broadly trade off a bit in here. You can tell that the equity markets are somewhat skittish. And I think that's really and that Bitcoin and others are still being treated as a risk asset. And why are we in terms of Ethereum? Because of course, we had that breakout to new all time highs. Is that sustainable? The breakout was confirmed in our work, and that means we saw enough time above the final resistance to suggest that it's a real breakout as opposed to some kind of whipsaw. And that breakout targeted over the long term about 6,000 for Ether. And that by no means is off the table with this corrective price action. However, it's followed the lead of Bitcoin going lower in the near term, taking out some support of its own around 4,000, which is still a setback. So we think that we'll see lower prices before making making any progress towards that long term projection and also watching very key support levels pretty far below current levels. In fact, the 200 day moving average for Ether is more than 15 percent below current levels. So that indicates, mm. again, to manage risk in here. What about the ratio of Bitcoin to Ether? Because that's made a new multi year uh, low, right? That's right. So Ether really is the long term outperformer. So that that's the prevailing long term trend. And I think there's a lot of folks that would believe in that from a fundamental perspective as well. However, in the near term, with the corrective price action, we're expecting Bitcoin to do a little bit better, one, because it's down more already, but also, two, because it does tend to be seen as sort of the safer haven in the space, in the broader cryptocurrency space, more of a risk off position within a risk on asset class.